Well, I didn't realize I had to bring this up on the Texas Rewind, but apparently, I'm not going to even say the word, but somebody on the chat gave you a compliment. Mm -hmm. I returned from break and I used that compliment as a joke with you because somebody on the chat said it. And I apparently I've been calling to HR because I gave you a compliment that somebody else gave you. Dang and HR. I, didn't, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I, the world we live in nowadays. And to be totally honest, I was using words that somebody else said. So, so am I to be blamed? No, I think you're good. You've said, you were saying some other better things throughout the show about being a good coach also about. So this is Kate Nagley, by the way. Hi guys. <laughs> so Kay, um, Olin, worse teacher than me. So we were doing like, if, mm -hmm. if Olin was a teacher and I was a teacher, mm -hmm. she said that I would be the cool teacher, which I appreciate and I totally agree with. And Olin would be the mean teacher. But then you said, Olin would probably let you get away with some stuff too. And I said you would start yelling at kids if they weren't doing proper push-ups. Have I ever yelled? Raise your voice. Have I raised my voice? A little bit more than normal. Really? When in front of you have I done that? Mm, I can't think of a specific, but I can think of instances where you would. SEC Mike, sense. only time. Yeah. And he deserved it. I mean, but I apologize. I was, I was wrong. Sam Pittman was better than Jimbo, apparently. So. Yeah, and now he's about to lose four in a row. Exactly. Um, <laughs> did you have fun on the show today? I did. Today was a fun show. All right. I, was I good? You were great, as always. Right. Shirt's a little small, yeah. but... <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Whose shirt's tighter, mine or yours? That is true. All this right. shirt is really so tight. I'm just, saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, gun show. All right? You're going to give me a hard time. Oh. Oh, goodness. Uh, you're, you're not fired, but you're fired from the rewind. Uh, go hour. Uh, we did uh, seven seven games to watch. Was it that many games? We watched. Uh, we're watching for a lot of games, uh, and a lot of them are SEC related. Alabama, Tennessee came up. We did our scouting report with John Harris. When you are transcribing John Harris, it takes a little while, right? He's he's a yeah, little wordy. It's a it's a little wordy. Some some long words that have to be autocorrected, but he's always a good listener. He's so. a great listener. Breaks it all down. Recruiting country. Ron Rodger. And uh, we had Coach Alan Waddell on, on the Aggie defense. It is Tex Ags Rewind. Let's get into some games that you, my friend, want to see. Well, number seven on, or number five on my list would be number seven, USC at number 20, uh, Utah. USC needs to play Utah, even though I think Utah at number 20 may still be overranked. They've lost yeah. to UCLA in Florida. Um, but there are those that are saying USC is going to make it the playoff. Well, at this point, USC doesn't have a win over a, a ranked opponent. No opponent that they've played and beaten it yeah. has been ranked. So they need – not only do they need a win over Utah, but they, then they need Utah to keep winning because Clemson right now has two wins over, right, over teams right. in the top 15, currently in the top 15. So uh, and that's which a brand for, at this point do you trust more? Clemson. Well – you do. Plus, you know, you would think. Of course, I never uh, uh, trusted the, the, the uh, committees, but you would think that when you start breaking down schedules and, and trying to decide who has the best resume, a team with multiple wins over ranked opponents is going to get chosen over a team with no wins yep. over ranked opponents. Yep. What else? Uh, number fifteen, NC State at number eighteen, Syracuse. Syracuse, is, how about their? Style? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I don't buy it, but no. they're number eighteen. Uh, but this is this is a bigger game, I think, for Syracuse than it is for NC State. Absolutely, and this is their opportunity to try to prove that they're for real. Um, uh, and uh, they play Clemson next week, Syracuse. So yeah. if you can get a win, if you win your next two games, all of a sudden. You're the team that Syracuse we're talking about. Syracuse starts looking like a uh, a playoff team. But I, my gut tells me they're going to lose two straight. Uh, so does mine. My gut talks quite loud. <laughs> it's your second brain. You know that. <laughs> what else? Uh, how about this one? Number eight, Oklahoma State at number 13, TCU. Look at the numbers here. This is, uh, I think, amazing. Both teams average exactly – well, ex both teams average 46.4 points a game. God, that would be they're so nice. both – they're both tied nationally for third. And TCU defensively allows an average of 23.8 points. Oklahoma State allows 24.8 points. Wow. I mean, could Those you are... find two teams that are more evenly matched? Yeah. And I, I believe more in Oklahoma State, though. I think I do, too. Even though, you know, TCU, last, they beat Oklahoma and Kansas, which, you know, maybe – here's a weird thing to say. Maybe the – Oklahoma win doesn't mean much, but the Kansas win was pretty big. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was pretty big. So I th- that, that, that'll be a big game in the Big 12. Did you see the uh, Kansas quarterback? Somebody reported yeah. that he was out for the year, out and he's like, news to me. Is that right? Yeah. I saw that, but you know what? Their backup came in and played really well. Yeah, he played well. Bean. Yeah. Yeah, he played really well. So. I'd love to have that. All right, so Penn State, Michigan. Yeah, Penn State, Michigan. Uh, I think that's uh, going to be the to determine who actually plays Ohio State. And when they play, it'll probably be a de facto Big Ten championship sure. game. Yeah. Because I don't think anybody out of the West is going to no, be anybody no. out of the East. No, the West is a disaster. Yeah. And we've got. I think Nebraska's in first place in the West, which is ridiculous. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you've got uh, the the biggest game, and maybe. At least from a, I'm trying to think from a marquee matchup. Is this the biggest game of the year? Well, it's number three Alabama against number six Tennessee. First of all, it's a long time rivalry. Mm-hmm. Even though Tennessee has lost 15 straight, 15 straight in the straight. series, a long time rivalry. Uh, but then they're also undefeated, and you know, again, one Alabama's ranked number three, Tennessee's ranked number six. And if Tennessee wins this one, Tennessee just like that becomes national championship contender. In the second year under Josh Heupel, I think Alabama's going to win. So I came away. I actually wrote this on footballtaker.com. It was, it was such a Jekyll and Hyde feeling. And here's what I mean by that. On, a, on one side, you've got this pretty tough, down-of-the-wire performance in one of the toughest road environments you could go to. Yet, you had so many dumb mistakes. like. How does a defensive lineman not get off the field as the 12th man, uh, literally as the 12th man on the field to give Alabama an extra set of downs? You face a backup quarterback and you turn him over three times. You kept taking the ball away from him, but you let him throw three touchdown passes against you. You did such good things offensively at certain points of the night but then when it came down to the play that needed to be made, uh, I, I, so it was that kind of feeling as I'm watching kind of all night. Defense has a great stop. Offense steps on itself. Defense can't get off the field. But then the offense gets the ball back and makes incredible plays to get in position to score uh, and take advantage of mistakes that Alabama made. It was just kind of kind of all over the place all night. And in the end, and this is the final one. And this is where I'm kind of stuck because this is kind of Aggie football existentialism right here. Like, what are we? What are we supposed to be right now? And I think those two things are kind of clashing. What are we and what were we expected to be? Because I think the expectation was now you go back to preseason polls, all that kind of stuff. But I think Jimbo's been there. I'm not sure on the number of years Jimbo's been there now. Probably four or five, I'm trying to think of the number. But either way, he's been there for a number of years. The thought is you've got to be in that upper echelon, the Georgias, the Alabamas, um, and even this year, uh, Tennessee. And I think you're, you're probably a tick below that right now. But you can compete with those teams. But you're not at a point where you're doing that every single week. There's still an inconsistency in some sense with that. So you go into a game at Alabama where you're an underdog with a backup quarterback and you hang in there and you're, 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 I mean, Alabama's a tough place to win for anybody, but you don't make the play at the end of the game. Yet the expectations have been, we need to be in that mix. Jimbo's been here four or five years. We need to be in that mix. Like this is where we need to be every single week. It doesn't need to be where, okay, moral victories anymore, but yet it's a young team. so. Do you take a moral victory out of it? So, David, I'll be honest. I'm kind of confused. I'm kind of confused how I feel about the Aggies because there's some points where I'm like, you yeah, love this. Evan Stewart, come on, let's go. Let's do it. Haynes King, tough, man. Look at the toughness. But then, what is that throw? Like, throw the ball away. Make this play. It, it, so it's kind of, I mean, I'm kind of all over the place with it, um, to be honest. Um, and that's what's really kind of frustrating. And I'm sure it's probably frustrating. Aggie fans, too, because, like I said, the expectation this year was what? To go to Alabama, not only, not only beat them, but be in the mix for the SEC West. 
to be that team in the SEC West, to be that team in SEC that go to Atlanta, take on Georgia and go toe to toe and just bar barroom fight a brawl. And it's not quite there yet, but I think it can get there. But how much longer do we give it? You know what I mean? I feel like we've been saying this, like, man, it's, it's, it's so close, but it's just, it's not over the top yet. And I'm, I'm wondering what's going to be that trigger point to really push it over the top. But that a and is that team that we look at on the schedule as an opponent and go, Ooh, boy, that's a toughie. Man, Alabama, Georgia, a and I mean, you want to be in that conversation. And, and it's just – it's so close. It's tantalizingly close. But there's still some things getting in the way. Uh, coaches are going to be traveling quite a bit. It's – it's what we do during what they do during the bye week. So t- t- take us through a little bit of that. Yeah, it was this the first time they've really gotten on the road since the season started. And you'll catch a stray coach from other schools every now and then. I've seen, I uh, saw Baylor at DJ Lagway's game. I've seen uh, Texas at a couple of games, but I haven't seen AM represented up until this week. And so they're going to be out uh, in full force, not only at, at games starting tomorrow and Friday, but they've been kind of out and about during the week. Uh, we saw Elijah Robinson who was in Katy. Uh, they've been obviously all over Houston looking at 23s and 24s. Tyler Santucci's been uh, in to see Damian Sanford and Anthony Hill, and he's going up to Colorado to see a new linebacker offer who's committed to Nebraska but is really starting to gain steam with other schools. I think Ohio State's making a big push there. His name's Hayden Moore. Okay. Um, if you're a recruiting junkie and you like following this stuff, I would encourage you to go watch his tape. It is extremely impressive, and there's a reason why everybody in the country is starting to get a hold of this kid and, and realize what kind of player he is. And he's a three-star, but whatever. Like, go turn the tape on, and it's really good. So A&M recently offered. Uh, I would imagine they'll, they'll push to get him on campus. Uh, Jason had some notes where they're all over the state of Florida looking at all those receivers down there, so keep checking in. Uh, Damian Craig will be at Austin Westlake versus Dripping Springs. Obviously, T.J. Shanahan – Offensive line commit at, at uh, Austin Westlake. But Austin Novosad, quarterback at Dripping Springs, a guy that a and made a huge push for over the summer, decided to stick with his commitment to Baylor. But A&M has not gone quietly. I, mean, I, I think, you know, obviously the amount of communication has dwindled, but there still is communication between both parties. So uh, technically not completely done on the Austin Novosad front. I, as of right now, and I said this earlier this week when I put it out, I fully expect him to sign with Baylor. I've been given no indication that he's even looking around at, at flipping to any other school. But A&M still uh, trying to make waves there, as is Ohio State. And I was told Ohio State coaches will be there on Friday night as well. So, uh, you know, it's recruiting. Nothing's done until there's pen to paper kind of thing. And uh, A&M's, they're, they're fighting a fight, man. And I think based off what we've heard since Saturday night, mm-hmm. all the commits – are pretty locked in. We haven't we we've checked with multiple sources. Uh, it sounds like all the kids that are committed to A and M right now are, are locked in. Now I know that uh, the Texas Twitter army is trying to drum up a lot of suspense with Anthony Hill uh, because Art, I believe Arch Manning tweeted at him something about coming to Texas. Jason checked on that this morning. I don't think there's anything there. We'll continue to check on that. You I mean um, it, it? It could be something as simple as a guy on a message board saying, I think we could flip Anthony Hill. And so the Twitter army does what they do. Right. Um, but since Anthony's committed to Texas A&M, he's been um, really firm in his commitment. He's come back to Kyle Field a couple of times. Uh, he's been actively recruiting for A&M, both behind the scenes and and outwardly on social media. So uh, in, until there's something to worry about, there's nothing to worry about in terms of the guys committed. Uh, they're going to have to close now. And, and – we know what the challenges are. We've talked about them on this show. They haven't changed. Um, who knows after the bye week, what you know? can the offense make steps in the right direction on the back half of the year? Because they're going to have – they're getting hammered on the offensive front yep. with skill position players. Like, you're just – it is what it is, man. Like, and until, like, there's kind of a different narrative out there in terms of product, you're going to be fighting uh, those negative recruiting pitches across the country uh, – right up until December and on through to February. So Billy last week on the show made a, a comment to me he wanted me to ask you about. And just take us yeah. through 2001 uh, when the team defensively was struggling a little bit and Mike Hankowitz uh, had to simplify it. Take me through um, the simplification. 
Yeah, well, we're, we were a young team in 2001. We were a young football team. We had a lot of new kids come in. Um, and so it was a matter of uh, we got great game plans. And we got great uh, schemes on paper, but schemes don't win games. Players win games. And it's a matter of simplifying down, getting more reps at the fundamentals and things. And uh, and being able to, able to play what we want to play, not necessarily or what we need to play, not necessarily everything we want to play. So it's a process. It starts in practice. You uh, progress slowly uh, because of a young team, and you don't try to start doing things uh, new until you get what what you what you want to do old down pat. So it's a process, and the tough part is coaches realizing that and slowing it down, but yet yeah, not slowing it down so so much that you're just a basic lineup and don't do anything team. Why I think was with a genius on that too, by the way. <laughs> Why do you think teams have had so much success running on AM? Uh again, I think we're we're young, you know, so at certain places. Like inexperienced might be the better word. Uh when you're young you, you, you deal with pad level issues, which is a big problem, you know, type stuff. I don't think it's as much scheme as it is pad level and inexperience. And let's get right down to talent. You know, talent. There's a lot of talent. I think you go into Mississippi State game thinking you need to uh, to stop the pass, and they run the ball. You got Arkansas. It's a, a big running team with their big quarterback. Those type of things. But you know, we won one of those, and we didn't come out on top of the other one. Ar- uh, Alabama's game plan is to run the football, no doubt. You know, especially with Al Bryce Young. So I think it's more of a a, a scheme that you look at look at in the, in the Southeast Conference. People are going to look to run the ball first. Keep their defense, their defense on the bench, and win the game with running game, kicking game, and and, and defense. That's Southeast Conference football. Quick question: What oh, episode that? number is this? Take a guess. If you had to guess, what number do you think it would be? I remember you saying it's in the two thousands. Correct. Two thousand seven hundred. 12. Wrong. Dang it. <laughs> 2,886. I was not far off. But you were far off. Like 100. That's a lot in okay. betting. All right, so uh, <laughs> tell people what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, share. If y'all could hear me yelling from over there yesterday, I hope you followed my instructions and do it again today. By the way, can I borrow a dime? Do you have a dime? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. let me just. Yeah. Okay, this is really bad acting. It's Tex Tex Rewind. <laughs>